Okay, so we're going to talk about the loop of Henley, which um, a lot of people find really difficult. There's absolutely no need to worry about this because there's only a limited number of things you can say about the loop of Henley. Its overall function, so remember back to the, if you, maybe if you want to go and refer back to that video on gross structure, the loop is in, found in the medulla region, so it's coming from the cortex, the filtrate, coming in through the distal convoluted tubule, down the descending limb towards the pelvis, right the way through the medulla, turns the loop at the bottom and comes all the way back up to the uh, cortex where it joins into the uh, distal convoluted tubule. Now the whole purpose of the loop of Henle is to create um, a very salty medullary region. So all of this region in between the loops are called the interstitial regions. It's full of the interstitial fluid of the medulla. And it's salty, which means it's got a very low water potential. Now the reason that it needs a low water potential is because once the filtrate's gone through the uh, distal convoluted tubule, it's going to travel down through a collecting duct and once it reaches the pelvis we're actually going to stop calling it filtrate and start calling it urine and no further change can occur. So the collecting duct is the region where we can do a little bit of fine tweaking as to what actually does leave the body uh, in urine. So one of the things that we want to tweak at this point is the water concentration of uh, so the, the amount of water that we're losing here and so we might want to take some back and if you want to take some back obviously by the time the filtrate's got to here it's really quite concentrated in terms of urea if we want to take water back we're going to need a water potential gradient so we're going to need it to be very low water potential on this side now because as you take water out of a fluid it gets more concentrated and its water potential gets lower because it's got more solute in it, then as the fluid passes down through the collecting duct, if you need to take the water back, you're going to need an increasingly lower water potential. So in fact, what the loop of Henley does is it obligingly makes a water potential gradient, which means that up at the cortex end, you might have uh, minus 200 water potential as you travel down through towards the pelvis. It might go minus 300, minus 400, can't do a 5 upside down, 500, 600, 700, 800. So we've got a gradient here with less salt at the top, more at the bottom. Higher water potential up near the cortex, lower water potential down near the pelvis. So how does it do that? Well, one of the ways in which it does that is that in the ascending limb, and this is the property of the ascending limb, it is impermeable to water, but it actively transports out salt. So it's actually putting that solute out into the interstitial fluid. So, I'll just, so that's our salt going out, active transport. Impermeable to water, I'll use red for water, weirdly. And so all the water stays in, but the salt's pumped out to make these low water potentials in the medulla. On the other side, we've got the descending limb. So I know this sounds a bit backwards, we've gone to the one that's leaving first and the one that's coming in second. In the um, descending limb, this is permeable to water, so water is going to leave again by osmosis because you've always got a lower water potential on this side. So even if you know, you're coming in with uh, minus 199, as you sort of lose that water, it's going to get lower and lower and lower inside the filtrate but it's always much lower on the outside. So the descending limb is permeable to water and so water is reabsorbed. So it's, it always seemed a bit, I think when I was your age, it all seemed a bit 
uh, sort of counterproductive really. You spend all this energy, this ATP, um, making the water potential lower and then you put some water into it. But remember that's just going to be really rapidly removed by those vasorectal kidneys. So we say that it's reabsorbed, which uh, implies that it's going into the blood. Nothing happens to the salt there. The salt is going to stay in the tube. So just do some curly arrows to represent that. So as the filtrate passes down, itself it's going to get a lower and lower water potential as it loses water. The salt's going to be really concentrated down there. And then you're going to pump the salt out into the medulla to make it salty but keep the water in. So the water potential rises. But what's altered between this point here and this point here is volume because you've lost lots of water. So, what do we need to say when we're talking about it? You need to say, you need to remember the permeabilities. Descending, permeable to water, water leaves by osmosis. Ascending, impermeable to water, salts actively transported out into the medulla, lowering the water potential of the medulla and making that salt concentration gradient. In order, from the collecting duct, more water can be reabsorbed if necessary. That is really all there is to the loop of, of Henley. You might see a term called countercurrent multiplier banded around. Countercurrent, this tube, the fluid's going that way. This tube, the fluid's going this way. So they're going in opposite directions. Countercurrent. Multiplier, because the longer the loop, the bigger the salt concentration gradient you can make. And we'll come back to that in a later video about adaptations. Okay, that's it for the loop.